Princess Tutu! Episodes 2 and 3. I know, right? <laughs> if you remember, I watched episode 1 of this show alongside episode 1 of Nana and episode 1 of Barakamon for the Shows for Girls category from a couple of months ago at this point. And if you also remember, in that video, I was wholly unimpressed with this show. Um, I didn't like the art style, I didn't really like the storytelling method, I thought it was confusing. Just all around, I just didn't really like it all that much. It was it was ranked the lowest out of the shows that I was going to choose from that category. So why am I watching it now? <laughs> well, weirdly, ever since I've watched that episode one, I have been thinking about that show. It's, it's the show that most frequently comes up in my thoughts, like, what happened next? And I think if I'm interested enough to wonder about it, then I'm interested enough to watch it. So I'm going back to Princess Tutu. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch episodes two and three. If I like it, then I'll watch the rest of the series. The opening is a narration about um, this prince who sacrificed himself to defeat this demon raven thing. Little pieces of his heart was scattered around the town, like metaphorically, not actual like hunks of flesh. <laughs> Let's say jewels. So there's this little duck. At the end of episode one, the girl that we were introduced to, Ahiru, um, woke up and was like, oh yeah, I'm a duck. That was all a dream. Nope. I guess not. This guy Drosselmeyer appears. Um, oh, Uncle Drosselmeyer from Swan Lake. As soon as I said that word, I was like, oh, I, I remember that. I guess it's not that huge of a surprise that they're using a name from Swan Lake because obviously that's where they draw their inspiration from. So Princess Tutu is the only one who can restore the prince's heart. If you feel like you can do this, I will turn you back into a girl. So the duck gets to turn into a girl, and the girl can turn into Princess Tutu to save the prince, who is Mytho-senpai. Then this girl appears, uh, Adel. And Adel takes her, you know, gives her clothes, the school uniform, and then brings her to the school. And then it's like, okay, bye, have a nice day, and then Ahiru is out running around, and there's Mytho-senpai. <laughs> She's worried about approaching him because she is actually a duck. I don't think I understand the being a duck aspect of this show. Like, why is she a duck? <laughs> she goes running up to him and she's like, hi! And he's like, hello. And suddenly there's a giant anteater student or teacher or something. But everyone's acting like it's normal, except for Ahiru, who notices that it's an anteater. Ahiru can't really handle their flirting, so she runs off. The way she turns back and forth between a duck and a human is if she has to get in water, and that will turn her into a human. And then if she says or does anything duck-like as a human, then she turns back into a duck. Do I just not get this? Do... <laughs> what am I not understanding about this show? Is this normal? So now Muto Senpai is dating the anteater. <laughs> and the girl, Rue, is like shocked, but not really. Every most everyone else is shocked. Oh right, and the teacher is a cat. <laughs> They have to all, like, try out for this special ballerina class. So the anteater and Muto Senpai start dancing. <laughs> Again, I just really don't think I get this show. Like, watching this, am I supposed to be laughing? Is it supposed to be funny what this is? Or am I supposed to be like, wow, it's artistic because it's an anteater instead of a person? So Rue has to get up and prove that she's good at dancing too. And so she asks Ahiru to join her. Ahiru's not nearly as graceful, but she's she's doing her best, and she's doing a good job. With Rue's guidance, she makes her into a very good dancer, and I think this kind of proves that Rue's much better, because she's able to make a bad dancer look good, as opposed to just looking good alongside another good dancer. And Muto Senpai's little jerky friend is the first to start the slow clap. The Antator gets really mad at Muto Senpai, smacks him, and he's just like, whatever. And as the Antator's like, wailing about how unfair it is. There's like this phantom Muto Senpai comforting her. Oh, it's a shard of his missing heart. So she turns into Princess Tutu. <laughs> they start dancing at each other. So I guess the editor's evil now. <laughs> I hope this is supposed to be funny. I hear he says, there's no, da there's no joy in your dancing. You dr you're miserable. So this all started because the anteater girl approached Rue and was like, I want to dance just like you, and Rue was like, that's impossible for you. And Princess Tutu was like, no, you must find your own style of dancing, show me how you dance, and then they dance together. And finally there's joy in their dancing. <laughs> so the P 
piece of um, the prince's heart, it's the feeling of bitterness. I guess that was what was like infecting the girl. So I guess he, she has to collect all of the feelings. So the crystal returns to Muto Senpai and goes into his heart. And he's like, what's this feeling I have? And the friend there is like, what feeling? What is the friend evil? All right, that's the end of episode two. I'm going to try to like stop trying to see logic in this and just kind of enjoy episode three as it is. Ahiru is practicing ballet. She's bad at it. And her two friends, one of them is like overly supportive and one of them is like overly aggressive. That's their personalities. They notice that Ahiru's been acting weird lately, so they're like, please tell us. She's like, oh, I'm just having weird dreams about handsome princes and fighting against evil ravens and stuff. So there's this book called The Prince and the Raven, and it's like the complete story of what is happening to Muto Senpai. And it's written by this guy named Drosselmeyer. But Drosselmeyer died midway through writing the book. And um, Muto Senpai's friend, his very overprotective, overbearing friend, comes in and is like, Where's Muto Senpai? He's all pissy. She's walking around town, and uh, Adel appears. She gives her some advice on what to do with this situation. Not really, though, because they always speak cryptically. Rue and Muto Senpai are on a nice little picnic together, and Ahira stumbles across them. And she's like, tell me you love me. Okay, now go get me some water. And he's like, okay. And he gets up and walks off. And of course she bumps into Muto Senpai, and he's just like, oh yeah, I'm just getting some water. I don't really know what love is. Anyway, <laughs> I'm off. And he scrapes his hand, and she's like, ah, what happened? And he's like, doesn't have any um, emotions because his heart is scattered around town. She ended up pouring out all the water on his injured hand. So now he doesn't have any water, so she drags him off to go get more water for Rue. And they end up like super far away. <laughs> oh, so they go they go into a restaurant to get some more water. <laughs> Just this really like weird looking lady in there. And this lady's like, please sit down, let me serve me serve you. She's so excited to have customers. And the jewel on her chest starts glowing, which means that there's a shard nearby, right? So suddenly it's like, okay, maybe we will stay for a bit. Rue and um, his pissy friend start talking. And they're talking about like, oh, he talked about having feelings. <gasps> they're in on this together. Back at the restaurant, they're trying all of the dishes that the lady's serving. And everything's really cold for some reason. She's wondering if maybe that has something to do with the, um, with the, uh, what do you call it? The heart shards, I guess. She sneaks into the kitchen and determines that maybe this this waitress lady is like crazy and a murderer. Ahiru wants to escape, but Muto Senpai doesn't get it. Ahiru gets kicked out, and Muto Senpai's still in. Ahiru turns into Princess Tutu and um, gets back inside the restaurant. And as usual, she solves the problems by dancing. So yeah, she is being possessed by one of the heart shards. And so it's it's all like, oh, you're in the wrong heart. I have to take you out of this heart and put you back where you belong. As they dance, she remembers her husband and he's maybe gone now. He used to be the cook and she used to be the waitress. And now she has to be the cook and she's very lonely and she wants the customers to stay with her. So she, she kind of like obsesses over them and makes them continue eating. So the shard that is possessing her is the feeling of loneliness. And it's like, you'll never be alone because you have all the recipes that your lover made for you. So now she can be happy and her restaurant can thrive. He's starting off with such bad emotions though. Now he's got bitterness and loneliness. <laughs> can we get him a nice one in there? <laughs> that seems sad. So as Muto Senpai is standing there like, whoa, in a daze, his um, Rue and um, his pissy friend come up and they're like, what are you doing here? Princess Tutu was here. She touched me. According to this story, Princess Tutu never ends up with the prince. Um, as soon as she confesses her love, she just turns into a speck of dust or whatever. And that's the end of episode three. <laughs> I think the premise of this story is very interesting with the collecting the emotions that people are possessed by various emotions and causing them to do kind of weird things. I think it's very cool, but like the overall execution is so weird that I don't I don't know if if I can follow it. I don't know if this is a show for me. I want to try watching a few episodes on my own and um, if I decide to keep watching then I will upload a review of through episode 12, I believe. So the next video from me regarding this show will either be a review of episodes 4 through 12 or it'll be me starting another show. Bye.